Isaiah chapter 38. I'm going to read through just the first portion. The, the first few verses of Isaiah 38. And then we're going to touch a little bit also on in Isaiah 39. Isaiah chapter 38. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amoz, came to him, or went to him, and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord. Verse 3, and said, remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, go and tell Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer and I have seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days 15 years. My God. <laughs> I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. And this is the sign to you from the Lord. The Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow on the sundial of Ahaz 10 degrees backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees on the dial by which it had by which it had gone down. And here we have, like it says, Hezekiah, he's pretty much on his deathbed. And God spoke, God sent Isaiah in to tell him, get your affairs in order. You shall die and not live. It's not a condemnation. It's just you know, just letting letting them know <laughs> you're in good here. No man shall know the day that he's gonna die. But he's not saying God's not saying that that he's letting Hezekiah know the day you shall die. He's saying, guess what? Get your affairs in order. You're, you're, you're in on the order. Hezekiah could have had the response of. Get me. I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of this battle. But but and there, and there would have been nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but God knew what he was doing and he knew who to whom he spoke. Hezekiah's response is to, to pray. Turn your face to the Lord and pray. He got the news, and it's, it's not that he was in rebellion, it's not that he was just so tied to this earth. But he turns and he says, Lord, remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I've walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is right in your sight. And that's all he said. There was no lamenting. There was no wailing before the Lord. No crying, no whining. He's just saying, Father, Lord, <laughs> remember how I've walked before you in truth. And God sent word back to Isaiah, through, by, through Isaiah. And he's saying, because, yeah, I've heard.
heard your prayer. And so I will add to your days 15 years. At this point, it's like God is saying, you know what? Wow, you, you have lived before me. And because your desire is to remain, I will give you 15 more years. To God, 15 years is that. Because he doesn't have a watch, he doesn't have a calendar. He, he has none of that. He doesn't have a sundial like they had. 15 years to God is nothing. Really nothing. You can't even call it a second on his clock. Because he's eternal. And he's been around forever and will be forever. So 15 years to God, I mean to us, that's a that seems like a lot. That seems like a lot. And to God, it's really nothing. So he says, I will add 15 years to your days. For Hezekiah to be able to say that before God, and God to, to honor that, Hezekiah does. Remember, he says, I walk before you in truth loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. Hezekiah has been letting his light shine. God saw benefit in allowing Hezekiah to say 15 more years. If I give him 15 more years, more people are going to get to know me because of Hezekiah. Because say this one has a loyal heart that's saying something that is really saying something so he gives him another 15 years the rest of the chapter Hezekiah goes on and makes, makes declarations before the Lord of where he was and how, how God brought him out. And then we get to verse 21. And we now as now Isaiah had said, let them take a lump of figs and apply it as a poultice on the boil, and he shall recover. And Hezekiah had said, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? Rewinding just a, just a bit, that God used the the the, the sundial as a sign that Hezekiah would indeed live the fifteen years. It wasn't just a promise, but it was a promise with a with a with a miracle, with a seal of a miracle on it. You know how a sundial works? The sun's it, it set, it doesn't move, but as the sun goes across the sky, the shadow on the sundial tells you what time it is based on the position of the sun. That's, that's how a sundial works. So at noon, where there's no shadow, where it's, where it's up high noon, then there's no shadow again. But based on, on the time of the year, in the winter time, it's not going to be straight up and down at noon, but it's going to be that. So they had to gauge all of that by the sundial. Because God had given Hezekiah more time, the miracle that he used to seal it was the sundial by which we measure time. And the significance is that he said it went back 10 degrees. It went back 10 degrees. What happens when you set time back? What? You get more time. Why do we love daylight savings time? <laughs> the one, because you get an extra hour of sleep. You get more time. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> See, God's given Hezekiah more time, so the miracle, so that, so the the, the 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 sign that he used was to push the sun back ten degrees. Now, scientists have actually confirmed 
that from the beginning of the earth, you know, when they call from the from the Big Bang, you know, from the that in all the measure of time that there's actually I, I can't remember the full amount of time that's that's missing on the timeline. <laughs> but when they reported that, biblical scholars went back and found that time, and that's in the word. It's in the word. It's like scientists, they, they're confirming the word, and they didn't even know it. Because <laughs> there's one account in the Bible where God held the sun in place while the, the battle, yeah, while the battle was going on. And then we have uh, this time when God set the, the, the clock back, set the sundial back 10 degrees. That time is accounted for. So science is just confirming that. <laughs> but here we have Hezekiah. God sends Isaac, Isaiah to tell Hezekiah, get your affairs in order because your, your time is short. <coughs> Hezekiah, his response is to pray. He was, and just, you know, just go before the Lord. Remember how I've, I've walked before you in, in truth. God honors his request. Honors his request with request with 15 more years. I walk before you. What does he say? How I walk before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. So God honors gives him the sign of setting the, the, uh, the, the, the sundial back <laughs> 10 degrees. Okay? So I, Hezekiah has these, has these these 15 years that he knows he has now. Let's go to verse uh, chapter 39. It says, At the time of Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon sent letters and a present to Hezekiah for he had heard that he had been sick and Hezekiah was pleased with them and showed them the house of his treasures silver and gold the spices and the precious ointment and all his armory all that was found among his treasures there was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say? And from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said, They came to me from a far country, from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing of my treasures that I have not shown them. And Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the words of the Lord of hosts. Behold, <laughs> the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. <laughs> Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget. And they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord which you have spoken is good. For he said, At least there shall be peace and truth in my days. <laughs> wow. So here's, here's, here's King Hezekiah. He's basically on his deathbed. God says, set your house in order. Be on, be on guard. Set your house in order. Hezekiah, his reply is request. Remember, Lord, how I've walked in, walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart. And I've and I've done what is good in your sight. God says, you know what? You sure have. You sure have. And so there'll be a benefit if I lead you to it. If I give you more time. So by this, you will know that I will give you this time to set your sundial back. It's this time. And then we have Marath Baladan, son of the king.
king of Babylon, he hears about Hezekiah. Heard that he was sick and heard that he got better. So he sends him a letter. And Hezekiah, I, I don't know what was in the letter, but it pleased Hezekiah. And they came. And Hezekiah shows them all the treasure of the Lord. And they came, and he sent the letter because he had been sick and had been healed. He was near death <laughs> and had been healed. But when they came, he showed them the treasures of his house. He gave them the tour. Everything that he had accumulated, everything that his fathers had accumulated, everything that was, it said it was everything that was under his dominion, he showed them. Showed them what was wrong with his people. They sent him the letter because he had been sick, and he's now well. And when they come to see him, he shows them the treasures of his house. He's the one that reminded God, "Did I not walk before you?" in truth and with a loyal heart and done what is good in your sight. But then after God heals him, gives him a miraculous sign to let him know that he's got all this time now, as soon as somebody commends him, as soon as somebody comes to see him, after having been miraculously healed, after having received this miraculous sign, he wants to show his treasure. Instead of giving honor to God, instead of saying it's to God, my father, he healed me. Instead of saying, <laughs> I'm well, I was on my deathbed, and God told me to get my affairs in order. So I prayed, and he gave me 15 more years. Instead of accounting that to them, he showed them his treasures. He showed them his, his best. He showed him his valuable. He showed them everything that was in his house. He showed them it was everything that was under his dominion, under his rule and authority. himself and all the things that he valued, everything that he felt made him valuable as a king. All the spoils of his, his kingship, which is king, but his kingship, his kingness, all of those things. What a testimony to God. How a testimony to God that is. That God has told him these things and God answered that prayer. Saw the benefit of leaving Hezekiah here for 15 more years. But Hezekiah, when he gets the opportunity to witness to the king of Bab to the son of the king of Babylon, he shows the son of the king of Babylon his treasures. He shows the son of the king of Babylon. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the king. You know I'm the king. And this is this is all my treasures. Start verse 3. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said, What do these men say? And where did they come from? And Hezekiah said, They came to me from a far country, <laughs> Babylon. King of Babylon. You, you, okay, so they came to see you. You were impressed by the King of God. You were impressed by the King of God, right? So you wanted to, you've been healed by God, but you're impressed by the King of Babylon. That's why, you, that, that's why you have to show his son all that, that you have, all that you are. Well, because you came from Babylon. And then he said, what have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, they have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures 
that I have not shown them. What he valued in his heart at that point, that's what he showed them. Not God's gift of life, of time, but his treasures, everything in his house. And this is immediately, I would say immediately, but this is within direct time proximity of God having let him know you got more time. First question you ask, <laughs> yeah, what, what do they say and where do they come from? Well, they came from Babylon, okay? What did you show them? Or what have they seen in your house? They've seen all that is in my house. And no, nothing among my treasures have I not shown them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your father's house, everything that you showed him, this was a setup. Isaiah was setting him up. What? Who are these men and where did they come from? They came from Babylon. Okay? So he tells him, all the things in your father's house, everything that you showed them. Remember the second question? What have they seen in your house? All my treasures. So, okay, since you showed them all of your treasures, guess what? All that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. That whole situation. Hezekiah spoke his own condemnation in that situation. I won't say condemnation, but his own punishment. It's being spoken because of his attitude and his actions. Well, what did you show them? I showed them everything in my house. Well, guess what? Everything in your house. Where did they come from? They came from Babylon. Well, everything in your house is going to Babylon. Since you wanted to impress Babylon, since you didn't want to tell Babylon about the greatness of God who gave you more time, who got you up off your deathbed, since you chose not to talk to them about God, mm -hmm. they get everything that you have. They're going to get, and even they're going to get some of your son, whom you will beget. So it's like when you like hear on TV or somebody says, I want to get this, but it's going to cost me my firstborn child. Well, guess what? <laughs> I don't know if it's firstborn child, but it's going to be one of his soon-to-be children to come. He just cost himself. him a letter regarding it. But your testimony, your his <laughs> testimony is of everything that he has in his house. Everything that he's accumulated, when that's his testimony, after having been beaten, then guess what? He just, he just spoke. He just showed where his heart was at that point. He just showed what his treasures were. He just showed what he valued at that point. That was a I just gave you, number one, health. And I gave you more life, more time. And when you get a chance, your treasures, your possessions are what you show to others. Well, guess what? <laughs> Those who you try to impress, <laughs> they're going to be more, even more impressed with your treasures. Why? Because they're going to be there. Yep, they're going to be there. You're going to get carried off. Here's the most impressive part to me. Verse 8 of chapter 39. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord that you have spoken is good. <laughs> Isaiah just told Hezekiah, You're going to lose everything that you have. Going to be carried off to Babylon. You're going to lose some of your children to come to Babylon, and they'll become you. And you are God's gift. You're in the palace of the king. And Hezekiah just told him, Bad news, the word of the Lord.
this is what's most impressive about him. Yes, he was right. <laughs> God told him what was going to happen. He received the answer in Jesus. And then he got the God's next command. And he received the promise of heaven in Jesus Christ. I told him what was going to happen. He ain't even had an Isaiah yet. He's a kid yet. to me. Can I get one person to come before me with, and bring me some good news? say, you know what, the word of the Lord is good. He says, at least there will be peace and truth in my day. Not in my last day, he said, but in my day. At least there will be peace and truth in my day. At least, it doesn't say after 10 o'clock at night, it doesn't say after 5 o'clock at night. Peace in my car, peace in my day. him back to what got him to where he is in the first place. Brought him back to God. Brought him back to the believers of God. Brought him back to his awe and respect of God. And God was not surprised. God knew what was going to happen. He didn't, he didn't call us guard. But as I know, as I read this for the first time, and you know, years ago, and over and over again, it's still kind of like a, a bit of a surprise, or it's I, I say like it's hard to fathom that God, you know, somebody God could do something like that for somebody, and then they just forget about it. But believers do it all the time <laughs> because God sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, and we receive that. ourselves in that tough spot, when we find ourselves in that, in that hard place, it doesn't always bring us back to our righteous point. <laughs> <laughs> but 
already hear the word, you hear a, a correction, you hear something that somebody's speaking. trying to justify <laughs> my, my position but but eventually I came back eventually eventually I got to the point of receiving my own peace bringing that back to God because it was a time We would say the word of the Lord says, the word of God says, and he says basically the same thing. Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. And Hezekiah's response is, the word of the Lord which you have spoken is good. At least there will be peace and trust in my days. Exclamation points in here, so another incline that he even yelled it. <laughs> That's what, he, he, he wasn't even yelling at Hezekiah. So he, Isaiah wasn't putting any of himself into this. He knew Isaiah knew that God had to be speaking this, and Hezekiah had to have messed up. So because Hezekiah knew the entire situation. Isaiah knew the entire situation. He knew Hezekiah's whole situation in terms of what God had spoken to him. And when the Lord spoke, Isaiah didn't allow himself to become part of the situation. <laughs> he didn't allow himself to become part of the problem. He didn't allow himself to become part of the solution. He was only filled up. Receive that correction. Once you receive that new, once you receive the word back to you, 
would do something or not. That he would not have done that. It would be the direct consequence of his action, his inaction in this point. The inaction of not sharing the gospel, of, of not letting people know about the goodness of God, what God has done in his life. But that again would cost him and look to the right side of it. Not releasing the laws of possession and keeping them in the house of, of, of children for sin. But look to the right side and say, and these things are just as good in my life. And that would be the cross. Amen. If we look to the right side and look to what? The cross. The immutable, what unchangeable things were going to happen in his life. He was going to have peace from God. His possessions would be taken away. He would lose some of his children, but he would have peace. He's the only person in the world. And he would have true family. And a lot of reasons that it's spoken of. You should know the truth and the truth shall make you free, but there's a value in truth. But we found out
the dog, because most of the time, if you leave a dog in the house and you go outside, five minutes, you come back in, that dog is excited like you've been gone for a month. Man, the dog's excited like you've been gone for a month. All right, get out of your bag. They're jumping all down. You know what I mean? But you go away, leave in the house, go away for maybe what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, four hours, come back, it's a reaction to the music. It's a reaction to the music. You see, we don't want to find out that this guy got some kind of weird type of problem. Even though he never really puts us off the same way. He never puts us off. Or we, we find ourselves in places where it doesn't feel like God is there. And then he manifests himself. And we should have that excitement. Manifests himself when he reminds us that he's there, when he embraces us, we should have that kind of excitement. We should have more faithful dog in the house. About the prodigal showing himself, about him having returned again. You know what he says to him? Come on, Lord. Don't take my kingdom to take it away from me. Help me to see the compassion that's worth giving a ride. stumble and fall and we lay there and don't get back up, it doesn't even take full strength. And the enemy is like a toothpick. He knows what to do. And we're doing the same thing. I can't get up. I can't get up. But the old sin. And we're laying there and the Christmas story. We're staring out. I can't get up. I can't get up. That's how we are. We got to get up. Make the effort. The concentrated effort to say I'm getting up and I'm moving on. Because God forgives. more time when he heals us. And it wasn't even a miraculous healing because Isaiah came, I won't say that it wasn't miraculous, but Isaiah came and told them to, to put the lump of stuff and they put it on the boil and the boil went away. But God spoke that again. God provided that healing and he got up. So when God heals us and we get up and we get to our back to our, our, our regular and our good, don't show everybody us. So that, that opened the door right there. So when they come, he's like, you know what? Yeah, I went down and I was out. Woo I didn't know. God even said to get my affairs in order, but I prayed. But I prayed and God answered that prayer. You're not bragging on your prayer. You're bragging on God who answered your prayer. You're saying, you know what? I simply asked God. And he didn't ask him anything. He just reminded him how he had lived before me. God said, you know what? God gives us that, 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 <laughs> when he grants us that request, when he, when he presents us with that more time, when he gives us, when he answers that prayer, gets us out of that hard situation, don't take your time. Don't hesitate to tell people about it. Tell them how special you are. Don't show them us. Don't show it. Don't show them what makes us valuable. Don't show us the things that we, we we're going to tell them what we truly value. Lost sight of what's valuable to you, what is truly valuable to you. Having received you into my body, been knit in the Holy Ghost, all the death there you forgot. You forgot. So that's our that's 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 our message in that. Remember, remember God and His goodness. Hezekiah is back amongst his treasures. He's back amongst his treasures, and his treasures were his beloved God, the God of Israel. So when others came around. Because of God healing him, when others 
was in the realm because he was back amongst those treasures, but he did not die. And so guess what? Those treasures are going away. Those who are the oppressed, your treasures are going away. They're going to get your clothing. They're going to get all your things. They're going to get some of your things. But they're coming away. And the last thing for us to remember is when we receive that in my business. For one, who knows? None of your business what I said to them. You know who they are. You know where they came from. He could have he could have he could have destroyed the messenger. But they destroyed the messenger and took him out the room. And what took him out said, if you want to have peace and, and, and peace, take my word. And what took him out to say? And what took him out said, he needs to focus on what you're leaving. You need to get what God's leaving. Focus on what you're leaving. You need to get what you leave for Jesus for this world. Take the Bible with you, but don't you come and say a word to me about this world. Because you're going to get the wrong side. And when you get the right side, God is the right side. But you can't get too old with the wrong side. Where it says, I look for the hills for which cometh my help. I look for the hills for which cometh my help. something like that. This is another thing that's in here. God told Hezekiah to do one more thing. Last minute. Now Hezekiah put here. Don't you say after Hezekiah messed up? God let him know. You did this wrong. wonder why God's not that person God's not that person he didn't know he was righteous and just and if he did righteous and just and he was going to know why he decided to make this situation happen and if you're in a situation where you don't feel like you know why 